at that conference, he gave me his, uh, his, um, his business card and said, when you move to Japan, look me up and um, come down to Nagoya and I'll take you to Toyota City and we'll spend the day together. And I really, really couldn't believe my luck. I was like, this is amazing. So um, I did, we did, I made my husband take the day off of work and we went down and that became the beginning of an amazing relationship. I would jump on the bullet train and go down. It took 90 minutes and every about every two months spend the day with Mr. Yoshino. Just developed this incredible relationship together and I started writing blog posts. I had just started a blog that became an idea for, as he said, let's write a booklet together. Well, it, be, it became pretty clear to me that a booklet wasn't going to be enough. And so as we started doing purposeful interviews, I also realized that my original intention of writing a book with leadership, but with a clear leadership, like uh, topic uh, with stories underneath also wasn't going to suffice and wanted to figure out a way to write his learning journey from the beginning of a career all the way to, to the end and how we can all learn to lead and lead to learn and how we can create a life of purpose and meaning and also help others do the same and so that's how the book came to be. everyone. It's finally done. I have my Daruma here and I get to fill in his eye. I'm so excited. I literally just a few minutes ago sent the final approval message to my editor and as I am recording this she is uploading it to Amazon and it will be in your hands. We're sharing. Okay. Uh, an accomplishment. Yay! Yay. Thank you. Yay. Today is the one year anniversary or birthday of my book, Learning to Lead, Leading to Learn, Lessons from Toyota Leader Isao Yoshino on a Lifetime of Continuous Learning. And it's the release of my audio book. This is going to be uh, the new version of my book, Learning to Lead, Leading to Learn in Spanish. Also, thank you very much for for Katie writing the book. You know, otherwise, uh, I never, I never thought I could learn this much. Hi everyone, thank you for being here. It's so great and thank you to my team for um, putting, them, putting this event together and for you all for showing up. I'm gonna turn it over to Claire because I am not the host of this event, I am the participant. Yes, well, congratulations, Katie, on your second year anniversary. We're all so happy for you. And you can see already <laughs> in the comments that people are just sending out tons of congratulations. So once again, huge congratulations. For those of you who don't know, my name is Claire Cannell, and I am Katie's um, business manager. I've been with her for just under two years. So I actually came on board right after she published the book. And it's actually been really incredible to be along for this journey, to see all of the amazing things that have come from this book. So I am super excited and honored to be able to interview her um, for this really fun like reflection and uh, celebration. 
And I also want to give a quick shout out to, we have our tech um, helper with us, Brady, who can't speak, unfortunately, <laughs> because she has her microphone tied up to something else. But we're super grateful to have Brady on our team as well, just helping out with the tech. <laughs> yes, for all of you who work with V, these are the enablers of me giving as much value as I can to you. So thank you, Claire and Brady, for just being such important parts of uh, my team and, and helping me. Uh, have the impact that I want to have um, in the world with everyone. So thank you so much. And I'm excited to be here. <laughs> yes, of course, of course. So um, is there anything that you want to first start off by saying about the book, Katie? Or would you like us just to jump right in with our question? Well, the first thing I want to say is Mr. Yoshino is not able to be here given the time zone, um, but I'm going to surprise him later today which will be tomorrow for him, uh, with the recording of this live stream. So if you have any comments for Mr. Yoshino as well that you'd like to share in the comments, please add them. Um, I know he would love to see them. He always gets so much joy in seeing how much impact and uh, just how meaningful his stories are having and sort of the legacy he's created. So thank you all. And I will turn it over to... Um, to you guys to manage this. And also, we wanted to know, and I have not planned much of this, but uh, if you have questions or comments or anything, add them into the, the chat and my, we will uh, be flexible and address those as we go through today. So I turn it over to you to clear up this direction. <laughs> <laughs> Whichever side it is, right? I also wanted to quickly say that if you are watching uh, live, go ahead and put uh, where you're watching from in the comments and we'll give you a shout out. Um, and again, any message that you wanna share with Katie or any questions about the book, go ahead and pop them in the comments and we will answer them as we uh, go along. So I'm just gonna have uh, me and Katie just for now. Brady's in the background. We love and appreciate you so much, Brady. <laughs> so um, Katie, let's dive right in. What Im impact or reach has the book had over its two years now? I know it's so amazing that literally today is the 24 month mark of the book coming out. And I was actually sitting in the same room in the same place when uh, when it happened. You know, I, for me, the biggest. Uh, yeah. So here's yay. The biggest, <laughs> the biggest impact of the book is just hearing from all of you and like these messages that are coming in. And I'm seeing them come through about the impact that the book has had. You know, Mr. Yoshino uh, and I had been working on this book for almost two years. We met in 2015 when I first moved to Japan and our, our conversations became um, things I was writing about on my blog. But we worked on this book for two years together and then the pandemic hit and I had this crisis of do I publish in a pandemic? I mean, if we'd known it had been was going on for as long as it would, it would have been a no brainer. But I really knew that this book had the opportunity to inspire people about how to create a meaningful life, how to persevere through challenges, how to grow, how to help other people grow and could be um, helpful to, to people. And so the, the impact that it's had on so many and hearing all, you know, we have all 20, 225 five-star reviews on Amazon and the messages you share with me personally and uh, have shared on, you know, LinkedIn and the Amazon reviews about the impact that the book's made is just has been really tremendous. And it's exciting too that the book has been translated now into multiple languages and some discussions too about some future languages coming. So first was published uh, in Spanish by the Lean Institute in Colombia, and I'm going to be traveling there in October to keynote their event and celebrate the book's release there. Uh, it's been translated and released in Polish, uh, and I'm going to be going to Poland in September to keynote their conference. Like the book tour that we didn't get to have in 2020 is finally happening. Um, and um, it's being translated right now into Portuguese. And I'll be going to a conference there in November as well, as well as my friends and colleagues in uh, the Netherlands. And it's also been translated into Japanese, which has been the biggest delight because Mr. Yoshino so is now amazing. able to share the book with his family and his colleagues, his mentor, Mr. Segura, which we talk about a lot in the book. And he keeps selling, sending me selfies of the book in his bookstore. And it's just, that, that is like the biggest delight to me um, to, to see that. So Mr. Yoshino, when you listen to this, like my partnership with you is the biggest delight of all of this. And if I had the honor and privilege to be able to collaborate 
with you to bring forward your stories, help you reflect and learn, um, and then share that with the uh, world to help um, all of you reflect and learn as well has been just um, a real honor and privilege and one of the highlights of my life, honestly. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's also such a, an honor for me to even just be part of this relationship as well. Mr. Yoshino is just so such a genuine soul. And every time that I get to hear him speak, even if it's live or a recording that we're watching afterwards, it's just it's so wonderful. So, um, yeah, you can see in the comments as well. You know, everybody loves Mr. Yoshino's story. So if you haven't been able to dive in and read his stories, um, you, you have to or you have to get the audiobook and listen to them. <laughs> Yes, today's, today's the one year anniversary of the audiobook coming out as well. So that's been um, that's been fun. And I've, I've heard some people say like, oh, they, they feel like they've gotten to know me really well because they they have me for <laughs> plus hours in their ears. Um, so that's that's super fun as well. And you get to get snippets of Mr. Yoshino and John yes. in their part. So that's that's really fun. And a little yeah, teaser for those of you who stay to the end. We're going to be sharing um, some video clips from Mr. Yoshino and from John Shook talking about um, their experience together and the book as well. So stay tuned for that or watch that on the replay. Yeah, great. Awesome. So I just want to shout out again, if anybody is joining us now, go ahead and put where you're um, tuning in from in the comments. So far, we have people from all over the place, tons of people joining us from the United States, also Netherlands, which is, of course, no surprise. <laughs> we've got the UK, we've got um, some parts of Europe as well. So all right, another one from the UK. Yeah. Awesome. Hi, Chris. Chris coming in from Canada. We have Germany, Colombia. Hi, Andres. <laughs> UK, California, Virginia, all over. Hi, Arno. <laughs> Can't wait to get out and see you in person. So, Patrick, thank you. It was such a pleasure to write the forward to your book, too. So, uh, we're all part of this chain of learning together, and we're going to explore that a little bit more, I know, today. So, Yep, exactly. Oh, cool. Awesome. So I also want to invite everybody who's joining live to go ahead and put in the comments, what are any questions about the book that you guys have for Katie? Um, I'm going to be asking a few as we go along, but we'd love to hear from you guys as well. So I'll give you a few minutes to think of your questions or jot them down. And in the meantime, we're going to dive into some behind the scenes with Katie. <laughs> so the first thing that we wanted to ask you was, what are some of the things that you learned or discovered that had the most impact on you as you were um, writing and developing the book? So first and foremost, just the, the depth and breadth of, of the stories. And I think some of you, if you've read the book, you've read uh, my intro when I talk about how I had to make a pivot and how we, we talked about uh, or how I wrote the book. It didn't want it, it didn't fit neatly into like leadership lesson number one, leadership lesson number two. I really, as I started to, interview Mr. Yoshino and really unpack and unravel his uh, reflections and his experiences, I knew I needed to tell his story. And I didn't know exactly how I was going to incorporate both his personal experiences that led to him then starting at Toyota and then his professional experiences. And during the creation and the writing of the book, I discovered this metaphor of warp and weft, of weaving. And this was really, its a, to me, it's a really profound metaphor about how we can think about our lives and our purpose. And it also ties to the weaving history of Toyota starting as a loom company and a weaving company. So the, the warp and the weft is actually where this, this cover that my wonderful friend, Alana, who I lived in Japan with, uh, she, she created but I wanted to have these, the warp threads here are these, the threads that are the known purpose, the known beliefs, the core parts of us. And then the, uh, the weft threads are the things that are, and these are the foundation of our life. And then the weft threads are those threads that we incorporate, we discover, we learn, they're more fluid, they can break, they can be stronger. And it's the intersection and the interweaving of the known and the discovered that really create our unique life fabric. And so, this framework gave me the structure on also which to weave the stories of the book. So Mr. Yoshino's early stories and his experiences, the things that compelled him to learn English and then Spanish and become, be so, spend so much of his life working towards moving overseas and having international experiences and the strength that that gave him and his deep connection to learning and helping other people learn. And then 
his the weft the weft stories are how he learned to be a leader and then leading to help other people learn and so that really gave me the framework on this and I love this metaphor for us thinking about purpose in life as well and encourage you to think about you know what are your warp threads what are those things that are known and constant uh, even if you maybe not visible to you immediately when you reflect and look back. And then what are the things you've discovered and incorporated to create your unique life fabric? So that's that's the first one. And then the second is this concept called a, called the chain of learning. Yeah. And this was a comment that Mr. Yoshino made in reference, and I think it's one of the early um, learning to lead stories about his early experiences at Toyota. And he made a comment that he was so appreciative to realize that there was this chain of learning at Toyota where he was learning not just from his boss, but also learning from his colleagues, um, his peers, and that people were really interested in being connected together in this chain of learning. And I really embrace this concept now. I consider all of you watching live or listening part of Mr. Yoshino's in my chain of learning. And this is how we, we create a stronger world. And it's through the, the bonds and the relationship between us. It's not one, it's not learning in one direction because we're always learning while we're leading and while we're learning. So it's that connection. And I really I love that 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 metaphor as well about a chain of learning, how we're all linked together. So those are two of the things that I've discovered that were new to me, but have and have become really important in sort of my own philosophy about leadership, learning, coaching, and just showing up as a as a good human in this world. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that, you know, it spreads to all of their parts of, you know, your teachings and people who have been following you for a while have probably heard these concepts as well. So it's yeah. it's just great. It's so enriching. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a good way to describe the book as well. Super enriching. So awesome. I'm going to dive into the comments real quick because we had a few questions come through, great. which is great. So I'm going to start with um, Darren's question. He said, what is your favorite antidote from Mr. Yoshino in the book? Oh, so many anecdotes. Uh, you know, so, uh, you know, this was also the challenge. I'll just a little backstory in writing the, the book. There are some that were truly anecdotes, like, you know, a small um, something that happened, like a one off story. And then there were also these like multi year experiences, which, you know, couldn't just be easily packed into like a, a, smart, a small chapter. You know, uh, well, there's the one I share all the time that's really one of the most famous stories from the book about uh, known as the paint story, which was Mr. Yoshino's experience in his first weeks at Toyota, where he made a big mistake and he poured um, paint and solvent into a big vat, but he acted the wrong thing. He, uh, and a and hundred cars had to be repainted. And instead of blaming him, the managers looked at him and asked him to explain the process. And it became very clear. And he's like 22 years old. He's just out of college. It became very clear that it, it was easy to make a mistake. And not only did they not blame him, they thanked him for making the mistake. And I love that story for so many reasons. One, because I just can't imagine any time in my working history that that would have been made first, the first reaction not being blamed, and then the second, thanking for a mistake. But two, I always remember back to Mr. Yoshino telling that story because he was laughing. He hadn't thought about it. And that was one of the beauties of our partnership is like, I gave him the space and time to actually go back and we started a hit with him being a child but this was our, like the first we sat down to talk about his first weeks and months at toyota and he hadn't really remembered that for decades and as he was telling the story he's he's laughing he's like oh my gosh can you imagine that this is what happened and he's like this is what laid the foundation for his experience at toyota and it wasn't a one-off and so i think there was just so much uh, so much richness in that concept that the little things really, really matter. And so when we're talking about creating culture, it's the accumulation of consistent ways of behaving across the organization, because this is, was not a one off of just Mr. Yoshino's bosses engaging in this way. His friends were making mistakes on the front line and they were all being treated the same way, not blaming, but in a supportive way. And so I think about how foundational that is and what a shift that is about for all of us and how can we be more purposeful and look at process and not people. Um, we're really wanting to create a learning organization. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. 
Um, there are also some fun anecdotes that didn't quite make it into the book. Uh, about Mr. Yosh he had some wild stories, and I kind of allude to them, especially in his time in um, in <laughs> when he was living in San the San Francisco office, and he was the uh, you know he wanted to be the best gopher um, or jack of all trades in the world. And just really some wild stories about going out um, and procuring the best wine for visiting executives and, and more. So we kind of allude to that, but um, those are some stories that I will let him tell you uh, when you come join us in some private events. So uh, he's always happy to talk about them, but I don't want to share his stories here. So. <laughs> and this is why I just love Mr. Yoshino. He's always full of great stories. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes, um, not, not much hidden, so that's great. Yeah, yeah, and I also, I love that, you know, you mentioned you gave him the space and the time to really dive into these stories, and um, we are going to share a clip from him later on today, and you guys are going to hear him touch on that and just how wonderful a job Katie does of, you know, asking good questions in a in a nice way that made him just feel so comfortable. Mm -hmm. And um, also, if you guys um, have been following Katie on LinkedIn this week, we actually shared um, a full interview of her and um, Mr. Yoshino practicing their Hansei right after two years of publishing, um, publishing. So if you guys haven't had a chance to check that out, I strongly recommend that you do that as well. You'll get some more of these little tidbits, these little behind the scenes things, and it's great. Yep. Looks like Brady just put it in the chat. So that's great. Yay, thank you, Brady. <laughs> All right. So we do have one other question I see here. Um, and it, actually, Katie, it goes, it's like the two bookends, literally. Yep. So we had the paint story, which is at the very beginning of the book. And then we have the new me experience, which is kind of towards the end. So Andre's question is, new me experience was around 37 years ago. Do you see anything similar nowadays? So this was sort of in the middle of his career, which was the oh, yeah. expansion. It's actually when Mr. Yoshino met John Shook and actually hired John Shook to be the first um, non-Japanese uh, manager at, at Toyota. You know, I, there, there's a lot that goes in that, that question, but I, I, you know, the way I would sort of address that is, yes, I think there, is a, there are a lot of similarities in what we are trying to do for all of you who are practice, you know, continuous improvement practitioners. We're trying to take these concepts that were started at Toyota that might be called Lean um, or Kaizen and bring them into different cultural environments. And what was, I thought, pretty powerful about um, NUMI is that it showed that the, the principles can translate into whatever environment. It's about how leaders are showing up. It's about how um, we create the systems and structures that allow for people to develop and grow and be their best selves where we're following up. I mean, the GM plant that went from the worst performing plant across General Motors to the highest performing it within a year of working in the joint collaboration with Toyota. And so it shows that this can apply regardless of your country, regardless of your culture. It's about how you take those principles and embody them and how we provide the right support for people to develop and learn where it's not a punitive environment. Uh, and so uh, I do think there are a lot of similarities as with, especially with our world being so much more global uh, as well now. It's just about how you take and translate those principles. You know, I think it's so interesting too, that later in the book, we talk about how Mr. Yoshino reflects on the failed water ski boat um, experience, which was also in the United States. But what was a big difference there is they didn't have the same level of uh, corporate support mm -hmm. and the level of training support. And it was just Mr. Yoshino and a few people who were trying to lead the way. And that wasn't sufficient to really create new habits that then became the cultural habits as well. Uh, and so one of his reflections was, it, you just needed more support and more time and more coaching and, and hands-on um, application, to, um, doing it just sort of as projects or someone coming in for like a three-month initiative isn't sufficient to create the culture change. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I want to touch on that as well, Katie, about how, you know, you say like this can translate across so many different um, countries and so many different cultures. And that's something that we've heard from your students time and time again of like, you know, we're all over the world and we're still all, you know, having these same issues. So it's just so wonderful, you know, that like this can literally be so, you know, used across the globe and in so many different situations as well. So absolutely. And I think that's one of the one of the things I love the most about the leading to learn accelerator program that I run 
that's, you know, a combination of using the book as a shared experience and also all of the teaching and training that I that I do. But it's this global community of people realizing that the challenges that they're having or the things that they're thinking about are, you know, are universal. And so that create that wonderful, I guess, chain of learning again around the globe and how we can all help each other grow and learn and be successful and have the impact um, in our different organizations. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick pause from taking questions and we are going to share our short clip from Mr. Yoshino about his experience of writing the book with Katie. And he just has some really sweet, genuine words. So um, if you guys want to stay on for that, um, Brady, you can go ahead and roll that clip whenever you're ready. And we have some more live events coming on afterwards. So stick around. Stay tuned. So uh... It's very interesting. All those stories it did not came out automatically so smoothly because she keep asking me, you know, what you're talking about, something like this, just, you know, then I, let me check. Then I just pick up all my, you know, uh, data and everything. So it's, it's very, very interesting that, you know, the, the, the questions Katie is asked each time. And uh, then uh, she asked another question to my comments. So it's it's a chain of learning, not chain of learning, but it's a series of learning, a little bit deeper each time. So I learned, you know, okay, this is the power of asking question. And uh, and so I, I knew that Katie is a very, 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 very smart lady and always knows how to ask questions, particularly asking difficult question to answer, but she is so super, super good. Because whenever she asks that, you know, we call it, you know, scratching your, scratching your, your scars. So it's because you, you, you hurt something, but somebody just, you know, scratches and it hurts you. But what she, a question is not hurting me, makes me so good because she just, let me she help me to go back to those days. What kind of a lesson I learned? I never try to learn something lesson out of my failure or mistakes or whatever. But I learned, you know, I learned how to ask, you know, effective questions. I really learned it. That is what I'm doing. And uh, whenever they, my students or my staff member I used to work together with, whenever they ask, uh, they, they send me an email then definitely they are in trouble so then i have to i have to think about oh, what kind of question i have to ask them before i we start talking about it. so i learn some important important lesson how to ask questions more effectively without hurting them mm -hmm. so i i know how to ask questions so it, it's a very very important very useful uh, uh book that is that is my you know my comments to the book and it still it's my textbook it's textbook for somebody else but it's my textbook mm. usually when you write some books it, it cannot be a textbook because it's for somebody else but no it's about myself mm. about it, it's my textbook also mm. thank you very much for for katie writing the book you know otherwise i i never i never thought i could learn this much oh. Uh, I was just about to say, Katie, I can already see the look on your face, but just tell us a little bit, you know, what kind of reaction are you having to hearing uh, Mr. Yoshino? Uh, I, you know, I was there live when he said that, but it just like that, you know, I think it just speaks to what a, a important relationship he and I have. And, and really it was one of, it's been one of collaboration from the very beginning of, of partnership, of shared learning, of helping each other. And again, as I said at the beginning of this session, that this has been one of the greatest um, honors of my life to really partner with Mr. Yoshino. And I, I said at the beginning, even if no one reads the book, the process of writing the book and helping Mr. Yoshino reflect and learn and see some of his experiences from a different light, especially those failures which he'd been burdening himself with you know, kind of seeing them in a different, with a different perspective and unburdening himself from the sense of hard times is the greatest gift I feel like I could um, have given to him. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's the greatest gift for me too. So yeah. I'm, and I'm appreciative that he was so open and allowing our collaboration so that I could bring those stories to all of you for you to learn from as well. 
Yeah, exactly. Thank you so much, Mr. Yoshina, for being, you know, so vulnerable because he he does speak about how it was a little bit like painful, a little bit uncomfortable. He's like, I don't want to talk about these things. But then he went on to say that like the way that you asked him was just so, you know, nice and caring. So, you know, thank you, Katie, for for learning how to ask questions effectively. Yes, thank you. And I think that that's really important. So much I talk about is we need to lead with curiosity and caring and courage. And when we can do that, that's when we allow others to, uh, you know, really create that capability and confidence for themselves, but also clarity and, and creativity, but also this connection to understanding their own experiences from a different way. When we can hold the space for them to learn, it's just so, uh, so powerful and important. So thank you, Mr. Yoshino, for your wonderful words. And again, um, as, as Brady put into the chat, we have the full uh, interview. If you want to hear Mr. Yoshino and me reflect with um, Stephanie Feger about the book in the last two years, you can see the whole interview. Um, we released it live yesterday on my YouTube channel as well as on my blog. So it's listed there um, in the chat here. So yeah. go check that out. Cool. Well, the other thing I wanted to touch on was Mr. Yoshino kept saying textbook over and over, and I wanted to bring us full circle to all of Katie's teachings. And, um, you know, there's a lot of things that have come out of the book, um, and one of them is um, the accelerator. And we actually have one of Katie's uh, accelerator students who is going to join us now. Um, everybody, please welcome uh, Sean Carner. Hey, Sean. <laughs> hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I knew the team was going to surprise me with a few guests, so this is exciting to have you here. <laughs> I'm I'm pleased to be here celebrating this event. Yeah, great. For uh, well, Sean, you can introduce yourself, uh, but I've known Sean for years. We're both based in California. Sean came to Japan with me in 2019 on the last Japan study trip I was able to lead before the pandemic shut us down. And uh, was part of the Leading to Learn Accelerator and some other courses I've put on. And I also do some work with his organization, Genentech. So, um, but Sean, why don't you, I'll, I'll turn it over to you and Claire. <laughs> sure, yeah. So Sean Carner here. I'm the, currently the head of operational excellence at Genentech in our Vacaville facility. So just north of Katie a little bit. Uh, and like Katie said, I've been part of Katie's chain of learning for quite a while. Um, I think <laughs> Somehow we were connected. Uh, J Katie did a, a talk with some site heads at Genentech uh, and then also at a Lean Coaching Summit, I believe, that LEI put on. Uh, yes. That was sort of my first introduction. And, and then, yeah, going, going all the way to Japan was, I think, a real highlight, sort of one of those career defining moments uh, and really helped me to see how Really, how we coach, but and and how Toyota and Japan is is uh, doing that. But but really, ultimately, what I like about the learning from Mr. Yoshino and how you've codified it into the book has really um, sort of been built in. I was reflecting on this into my coaching DNA, if you will, uh, how I coach, how I um, have been supporting the site uh, from that standpoint. That's great. I, one of the comments you made to me, which I've been sharing, is like, you have a superpower now, which yes. always makes me so happy. It's like, boom, asking better questions. <laughs> superpower. Yeah. Um, I see your Daruma in the back, too, the one from our Japan trip that's signed by all the participants. So, yeah. 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 So, hopefully, yes, I'll be able to. It's faded a little in the back because of the sun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. It really has. But that's a sign of good Daruma love. Um, yeah. Yeah. I have. I have dates for May, May of 2023, so I'm hoping, hoping that once Japan opens their borders, we can uh, make that an official go and come back again. Um, and Sean, uh, Sean, one of the things I love um, too is you have a woodworking passion, just like Mr. Yoshino, and that that was a nice shared uh, shared you know experience. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Mr. Yoshino is loves to make. Um, I have so many coasters. I'm not actually at my home office right now, but many, many coasters. And um, he was, and Sean does a lot of woodworking too. So they had a bond on that when they were in Japan together. And Mr. Yoshino has been out in California too. Yeah, it was that that's kind of was a fun um, coincidence, I guess, if you will. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Well, I, I was actually going to ask you, Sean, about your, you know, you feel like you have a superpower. We use that quote of yours all the time. Um, and one of the, you know, one of the important um, 
characteristics that Katie always talks about is is courage. And so I was wondering if you wanted to just touch on that real quick about, you know, do you feel like after you after doing the accelerator and all the work that you've done with Katie, you know, how has that given you this this superpower? Yeah, it's interesting you say courage because the reason I, I use the term superpower is that really at its fundamental, it's it's fairly easy, right? It obviously takes intention and practice to become better at asking questions. Uh, but I've had some really great conversations, coaching conversations, if you will, just by asking one or two questions that then opens up the person maybe to their thinking about a particular problem. And that's why I call it a superpower because um, I often giggle them like, well, there's not much there, right? It's relatively simple. I just need to have the intention to ask the, that first question that then leads to the second question. And then um, I also use that, I think, in that quote, because after doing the accelerator, I was, I, I mean, part of my role is coaching at multiple levels, right? So I coach at the senior team level, but then at the time I was leading a manufacturing group. So I had a whole bunch of supervisors and I was coaching them as well as coaching at the skip level, some of my employees. And I could see sort of that chain of learning actually happening between the head of manufacturing, one of these supervisors, and then one of these the supervisors direct reports. Uh -huh. um, and so that was where that sort of superpower, because it really felt that it was accelerating uh, people's sort of main transformation and their own self-development around, around uh -huh. um, you know, the problems that they were working on. Yeah. Yay. I'm so fun. excited over there. <laughs> My intention is uh, manifesting itself with uh, accelerated learning, accelerated capability, and accelerated connection uh, across uh, across our organizations and with each other as well. So thank you. Yeah. Looking yeah. at the video, Katie, I'm starting to realize my background is starting to look like your background. Yeah, I know. You have a picture of you your know, books. My, grandmas, my books, uh, quotes from on the wall. <laughs> it's great. I mean, that's that also, um, I love sharing Daruma love around the world. It's a passion of mine. We go to the Daruma temple, so um, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> I was literally coaching one of my employees just now, and he asked, he's like, wow, you've made a lot of goals for yourself with that pile of derumas. I was like, actually, this little pile on the other side here, this yeah. little pile is to give away. He's yeah. like, oh, can you tell me about that? So I was explaining to him yeah. what what the deal with the Durum, derumas was and then gifted him one for yes. his goal setting. We were talking about improvement kata and how to ask questions. He's a new employee on our OE team. That's great. And it was awesome. so fun because I had my first in-person workshop event uh, with Genentech in Vacaville. I mean, I shouldn't say my first ever, but my, my first in since the, the pandemic, it was great to be on site uh, just like a month and a half ago. That was so, and so I brought some Darumas and got to spread more Daruma love. So thank you for sending them forth into the organization. That's great. Yeah, paying it yeah, forward. Yeah, we got some great feedback from that that event, and um, we're going to do another one uh, yes. similarly. Yes, I mean, I'm excited. It's great to – one of the things that I, I love, too, is being able to collaborate with uh, leaders of change like yourself to be able to, you know, accelerate what the impact you're trying to make in the organization, help you bring these concepts forward, and so to create, uh, like, learning experiences that can really embed – and be a foundational element to like take it to the next level and to create that chain of learning across your organization. So it's all it's a pleasure uh, working with you, Sean, and having you such an important collaborator to um, to really spread this in uh, in Genentech and, and more broadly. Awesome. Well, thank you for coming on. This is a fun. Thank you so much, Sean. Fun of course, solving. happy to do it. Yeah, great. Well, I look forward to um, seeing you very soon and we'll follow up and uh, and make some more plans. So that'll be great. Cool. All right. Thanks. All right. Bye. Thanks, Thanks, Mon. Mon. Good to see you. Thanks for joining the party. <laughs> you bet. Oh, that was amazing. Thank you so much again, Sean. Um, 
And then the other thing I wanted to uh, circle back to, Katie, is, um, you know, we talked about how many different things have have come out of the book. And I think I jumped the gun. I said I mentioned the accelerator without really explaining what that is. <laughs> and so in your words, can you just tell us a little bit about like what what uh, mm -hmm. is the accelerator, the learning to lead accelerator? Yeah, so uh, out of, well, first to take a step back. So the, we released the book in July of 2020, and then I knew I wanted to create a companion document to help people, you know, there were reflection questions at the end of each chapter, which were really intentional for me. I wanted, actually the working title of the book was Practicing Hansei, Hansei meaning self-reflection in Japanese. Uh, but I, I really liked the concept of learning to lead and then leading to learn as sort of the cyclical um, cycle, but we have practicing Hansei questions at the end of every chapter. So then I created a workbook that goes a companion workbook that has more of my coaching and leadership concepts in partnership with, uh, with more reflection questions from the book. And then out of that, I wanted to create a program that really would explain those principles in more detail and also create community. And so I launched a program called the Leading to Learn Accelerator, which is, as Sean just said, really instrumental to him as a leader of continuous improvement um, in his organization to accelerate um, the practices and accelerate his impact in the organization and, and help others to do the same. And so it's a program that consists of five modules that are, cover the, the experience of Mr. Yoshino's journey of learning to lead and leading to learn and tying in concepts around how do you think about purpose how do you ask more effective questions? What is it like? What does it really mean to be a leader as coach? How do you can create these conditions for people to be successful? How do you think about problems and setting targets? How do you help other people do the same? And then more skills around problem solving, talking about mindset, uh, all these really core concepts that come out of the book, but how do you then take them and apply them to yourself? And so uh, there's been an evolution of the Leading to Learn Accelerator, which now uh, you can access just as a self-paced uh, experience or be part of a periodic group shared learning experience that I have, which Sean was part of uh, a year ago, yeah, where, where we then have group coaching and discussion groups as well. So I'd love for any of you to be involved in that the next time I offer it, or to just dive in and, and take advantage of those uh, recorded modules and really start taking those principles and practices from the book more deeply into your life to help accelerate your own impact as a leader or as a coach of continuous improvement in your organization. And the added benefit, which so many people said, and I have found through my own learning journey of being, becoming a better leader and coach, is that when you start thinking about how to be more purposeful, when you start thinking about how to slow down and be more proactive and less reactive, when you start learning how to ask more effective questions and break the telling habit, as I like to say, you actually find that you're a better human being. I've become a better parent, a better partner, a better friend. And so there's like this intangible, unexpected outcome that people have as well um, when we can we can really shift and uh, and align our actions more with our true purpose in our um, in our heart. So yeah. that's the Learn Accelerator and why I'm also so passionate about working with different organizations to, to take these um, principles and because it's then into their organization because that, that's how we're really expanding our chain of learning together. It can't just be one person. So how do we develop the capability and confidence of others to do the same? And that's the real fundamental purpose about learning to lead and then leading to learn. And this attitude about learning and capability and people first. Like Toyota's motto, we make people um, while we make cars. And so it's the focus on people. So there you go, a little, a little, little tidbit there. <laughs> And then also you mentioned that like you're doing like some more speaking and like actually going into organizations and stuff like that. And I know that you just had like this huge like break the telling habit like keynote. So what are some what are some other examples of like, you know, the book started all of that, right? It did. And it's been so nice to be able to meld what I've learned from Mr. Yoshino and these frameworks that sort of developed through the process of writing the book with things that I've been learning and practicing through my earlier time as a leadership coach and consultant and practitioner in an organization, my own journey of like learning to lead and now leading to learn. Uh, so fun, you know, I, so I've been doing some work with Genentech as Sean just shared, so, um, a combination of going in person and some, you know, remote sessions with their leadership teams. 
And that's been super fun. And I have some other clients, some of whom were in the chat too, that I'm of some other organizations I'm working with. Um, but also so fun to be back on stage live. I mean, I've, I've gone to so many, as we all have, so many virtual events. I mean, I love that we're all able to be here virtually, connect around the world, but I love being in person and I also bring Darumas. Um, so <laughs> keynoted a few events earlier the, uh, in March and in May this year, and I'm excited to be traveling around the globe and um, have some plans for some other keynotes, both about the book and then also concepts like break the telling habit or what it means to like lead with intention and how to really connect with purpose and have a purposeful life, both not just professionally, but uh, personally and how to unite those two. So it's, it's fun to, I'm always creating and always learning. And I think, um, and always, <laughs> and always a bit joyous and uh, excitable as well, because I love connecting with people and connecting people with learning moments as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of connecting with people, we have one other special guest who is going to join us live. And oh. um, she is the author of The Kind Leader. So it's only appropriate that we bring her on today. So everybody, please welcome Karen Ross. Yay, Yay Karen. Um, and Karen, I should share, also was a really important part of the book writing process. She um, was one of my developmental editors and really helped me Writing a book is not is not easy. It can be a very lonely process, and so she she helped me um, weave it together. And so thank you, Karen. I've been, you're such an important part of uh, part of this journey as well. And actually, Karen got to meet Mr. Yoshino back in I think it was 2017. We were at a conference together, all keynoting, and so that's the first time Karen and I met. But Mr. Yoshino was there too. So we had this we had this wonderful connection through. Uh, through all of that. So thanks for coming on today. You're welcome. And thanks for inviting me. And most importantly, happy second year anniversary. Yes. <laughs> I know it's hard to believe it's been two years. I mean, I can believe it's been, it's been, it's been a long two years, um, but a, a good two years as well, um, despite the hard, hard, the hard times as well. It has been. And one of the things I was really thinking about is so many, you know, and, and really back to Mr. Yoshino too, so many stories in the book have to do with Mr. Yoshino thinking about what would be best for someone else, right? Not necessarily best for him or easiest for him, but how could he help his team learn? How could he help his team succeed? How could he help people grow as people, even though you know, some of the stories in the book, things don't turn out as well uh, for him as you would. And I've really been thinking a lot about that lately because just with so much difficulty and division and, you know, we look around at leadership now mm -hmm. and I really have to, to ask myself really as leaders, are we really, you know, we influence people all the time, as I say in, the kind leader, we wear our leader hat many times during the day, whether we have formal leadership positions or not. And when we have our leader hat on, are we really thinking what's best for the people I'm leading? Do we really know our people as people? Mm -hmm. And do we, do we know what they want? Do we know mm -hmm. what's best for them? And when we talk about kindness, I mean, it's such an important topic in the world now, right? Kindness and leadership, failures of kindness, failures of leadership combined have got, got us to some of the places we are now. What do you think, Katie? No, I, I, I agree. And I, I think my experience is Mr. Yoshina really embodies that kind leader and the caring about people. And I was, I was finding, like I mentioned this earlier, leadership lesson uh, that his, his motto in the world is, make a small effort to give a bit, little bit extra every day. And I think that that's some of the essence of kindness. How can we give, make a small effort to give a little bit uh, better, a little bit more um, in, in the world and to others. And it's not always about ourselves. And it's not that we need to negate ourselves. That's important. We need to be kind and, uh, kind and caring to ourselves as well. But how do we have a mindset of caring and kindness towards others as well? And, uh, it's, it's such an important part of leadership and leadership at all levels um, in our personal lives and our professional lives and how to have a really, create a really meaningful impact and create a better world. So I, I really value what you're doing, Karen, to help 
uh, focus on kindness and really amplify that as a core part of, uh, of, of leadership. And I want to iterate too, that like, that's the, I think the, the, the essence of this book too, that lean is not just about, and the continuous improvement is not just about the process or the outcome. It's about how you're leading with kindness and caring and curiosity and courage. Absolutely. And when you think about it, you know, we're also used to the saying, be hard on the process, be soft on the people. But when you think about it, we're, we've sort of taken in what's hard on the process. We don't blame people. We, you know, look very carefully. We go and see. But what does be soft on the people mean? I think it means be kind to the people. Understand that every single one of us is human. Every single one of us is going to make a mistake. I think about Mr. Yoshino's paint story, right? <laughs> and just thinking, oh, my goodness, what's going to happen to me? But actually what happened wasn't just that someone was hard on the process. His leader was kind yes. to him, yes. right? People feel bad when they make a mistake. Nobody wants to cause a problem in a process. They don't want to cause, we need to actually actively give that little extra and be kind to people because they feel bad. Yes. And I think that really, you know, I'm, I'm pulling up another part of the book is ties so much into respect for people and how, there's a quote from Mr. Yoshino tying really to what you just said, Karen, where this is a quote from Mr. Yoshino on page 283 of the book. He <laughs> says, people often ask me, does respect mean that leaders should go to Gemba or the place the work is done just to say hi to workers? Do leaders need to be superficially nice to everyone? I'm afraid something is missing from their understanding of respect. And he's gone on to talk about how respect is not just about being, you can't say, give feedback that's constructive, or sometimes you have to, you know, set challenging targets, or you, you know, you have to set boundaries on what it, but it's about doing it from a place of kindness and caring that respects their humanness as people. And if we can get back to that concept of respect for humanity, respect for our inherent humanness, that is so linked to then how do we show up as as being kind and caring, and you can still have tough conversations, and you can still, you, I think you posted recently about this, that being, you can be angry and kind at the same time. It, they're not, they don't negate each other. Absolutely, and if anybody thinks that they're going to get to the part place in their life, I mean, I just turned 60, Katie. If anyone thinks they're gonna get to the place in their life where they're never gonna be angry, it's just not gonna happen. Anger is a normal, human emotion. We're all going to feel it. So as leaders, we have to understand that when we're angry, how we act is what other people who follow us, they're going to take that. We can scream at someone, we can lash out, or we yep. can say, I'm going to pause for a moment. <laughs> I'm going to, you know, control myself. I'm going to actually go and talk to the person. And again, it's not that we can be superficially, need to be superficially nice. Actually, I just started a new client two days ago, Katie, and we had a leadership workshop and we talked about the definition of respect for people, which is that we truly believe that everyone can do more than they ever thought they could do and that everyone can be more than they ever thought they can be. And when people come and give us the precious time of their lives, to care for our customers, mm. in return, leadership needs to make sure that they are helping them do more than they ever thought they could do and be more than they ever thought they could be. So actually, if we don't help people to get to that next level of work, we're failing. That's unkind, right? <laughs> that is unkind. We need to help people to be more than they ever thought they could be. If we forget we're people and we forget they're people, that is never gonna work. I no, uh, absolutely. And I, this gets back to something we talked about earlier too, but how can we, our, some of our innate human reaction is like, Ugh, but how do we get better at stopping that reaction? I mean, Mr. Yoshino even talks about how in that pain experience, he's sure that like the managers had this initial reaction of like, oh my God, I'm sure. But, you know, that's the inherent human thing, but how do we get better at checking that and not reacting to it. So we're more proactive at like acknowledging our feelings, acknowledging our experience, but then not acting that way and thinking about what's the impact that we really want to have and how do we align our actions? And you know, it's my concept of intention. It's like connecting your heart, who you want to be and the impact you want to have 
with the actions that are really going to embody that. And so um, if we want to be kind and, and caring and have a, you know, amplify that into the world, what is that, what actions do we need to take that do that? And how do we best acknowledge our own human experience as well? Right. And I think, Katie, that really goes back to something that I talk about in chapter six, act kindly in the kind leader and you talk about all the time that we need to start with reflection. Mm. So, guess what? I've been around here 60 years. I can pretty much tell you the situations that are going to happen that are going to make me lose my temper. There are a lot of things that, you know, are in common that I know when those things happen, I, I my emotions are going to overwhelm my intellect. So I suggest that people take time to reflect and sit down and think about the times that they have been angry before. And as a leader, what makes you go, ah! <laughs> right? And write those things down and then write down the strategies mm, yes. you're going to use. Yes. Before yeah. you run in and, you know, go yeah. totally screaming at the people. Yeah. We have, we, we are in control ourselves, right? Yeah. Reflect first. <laughs> and you'll be able to put some time between that your and your reaction. Absolutely. That's like so connected. I always say take an intention pause, like, okay, who how do I want to behave? Take a like just take a mo time, take a mini time out. I talk to my kids about this too. It's very helpful at all ages. How do we yeah. respond to our emotions and and understand what are, as you said, Karen, what are those triggers for us, the things that are more situations are more likely. And we can do that at work too. Like, yes, we know the things that are gonna be that and and how do we how do we become more proactive less reactive and create a kinder more caring more curious world um, because that's where we're going to really amplify and really create this strength of our chain of learning but also just <laughs> a better place for humanity as a whole so thank you for coming on and sharing helping celebrate the the book and for being part of my writing journey and our partnership for many many years and uh, i value your friendship and our professional partnership as well um, and thank you for spreading more kindness and more caring in the world too karen well thank you and thank you for two fabulous years um uh learning to lead and leading to learn <laughs> all right i'll talk to you soon bye thank bye. you so much karen and what a great you know just lesson for all of us of just being more kind and incorporating more humanity so again just another example of how this book mm -hmm. just expands across you know the the basic parameters that you had initially thought it was going to be for right and so it's just so Again, it's just so amazing to see all of the amazing things that have come out of it. Thank you. You know, as we were talking to uh, one of the things that's really special is I'm hearing more and more people who are saying I've read or listened to your book multiple times. I'm going back and learning something new from it. And I think that that's uh, but even Mr. Yoshino, he'll go back and read parts of it. He's like, oh, I'm learning something new, even though it was his own story. But I think that's the power of story and experience. Like we could talk about a leadership principle, but a story allows you to understand take what you need from it at that time. So that's just been, um, that's been really special to hear too, that it's not just something that people read and put on the shelf never to pick up again, but they're going back to it uh, and, and using it, as Mr. Yoshino said, as a textbook for life. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, and I love that he says that. And he's like, not, not just for me. I mean, it is me, but <laughs> for everybody. Yeah. So yeah, it's so, so wonderful. So there's um, a couple other people who are going to pop in and um, give you uh, another little surprise. And so um, I'm actually going to have um, Brady play a clip um, from John Shook. Katie, you've actually already seen this, but I'm sure that your viewers haven't. Um, and it's a clip from John Shook at your um, book publishing party, giving a toast oh. to the book. So everybody, please, please enjoy. This has been from or, or mid 2020. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. <laughs> really quickly. I want to read, I want to read just one note out of my forward because Okay, I'll sip, give some that I was going to say. But it's just that one of those broom closet conversations, we discussed someday writing a book together about the incredible experience that we were going through. We didn't know at the time how our amazing journey would end, but we knew something of historic magnitude was going on. We, we could feel that. It was powerful. It was wonderful. 
I think we would both say in our careers, it was the most wonderful, you know, intense time of our careers. And I think everyone has a time like that. This was ours, you know, and then, and then uh, but everyone has something like that. And we were in the middle of this thing. It was exhilarating. It remains the most impactful, rewarding experience of my career. And what I want to say is we never wrote that book. And so I want to thank uh, Katie now uh, for writing that book and more. Uh, it wasn't just that one experience, but thank you for doing this. Uh, thank you to Mr. Yoshino. Thank you to everyone joining. With that, I'd just like to make a toast uh, to the success and ongoing relationships of all of us, certainly Katie and Isao, and also the book, a toast. Best wishes, everyone. Katie and Isao. Katie and Isao. Cheers. Yes, cheers. <laughs> That was so much fun. We had a virtual book launch party, which actually enabled more people to come together. And we had a few, a few of them, and that was really special that uh, John was able to come on and talk about uh, his relationship with Mr. Yoshino um, and their partnership and so much that we've learned in the Western world about A3 thinking and about the Toyota way comes from John's experiences at Toyota and Mr. Yoshino was his manager. So he learned to lead from Mr. Yoshino. So that's exciting. Thank you. Yay. And um, I, I just want to say, if anybody's still watching live, go ahead and put in the comments like where you're watching from. Or again, if you have any questions for Katie about writing the book, yeah. go ahead and, and pop them in. We're going to um, get two more videos from some people who wanted to say a quick hi and congratulations. Congratulations to Katie who couldn't come live. Um, but yeah, pop your questions in and we can circle back to them uh, after we hear from a few more people. So the next person that we're gonna have um, come on is Elizabeth Swan, who is, yeah, <laughs> who might have been in that first party if I'm not mistaken. Is that right, Katie? I, I can't remember. She came to one of them for sure. I okay, yeah. <laughs> that video clip. Yeah, well, here she is, and she has a, a beautiful little gift to and show Elizabeth you. Elizabeth has a great testimonial on the back of the cover. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, Katie. Elizabeth Swan here. It's an honor to celebrate. Happy book birthday. Um, I can't be there in person because I'm teaching, and teaching involves leadership skills. And because of you and your book, I'm on an increasingly enjoyable journey of evolving leadership skills. Every morning I set my intentions for the day and I think about who I wanna be in this world. And that routine was inspired by you. So I celebrate you, Katie. And I have a little gift for you. So let me see if I can share that. So enjoy the moment, Katie. Enjoy all the moments to come and cheers. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> so fun and exciting, too. So Elizabeth, she played an important role. She was on my editorial board. So even before, uh, I guess, after Karen did the developmental editing, I had a few select people on my editorial board who read the first complete manuscript and gave some really constructive feedback. And I'm excited to be on Elizabeth's editorial board for a book that she's publishing later this year. And so the, the drawing that she made is a hint of what might come for Elizabeth. So congrats, Elizabeth, and thank you for your wonderful world uh, words. Um, and Elizabeth also uh, was on that same trip with Sean in Japan. Uh, she and her business partner, Tracy O'Rourke, joined me in Japan, on my Japan study trip in May of 2020, sorry, 2019 which is the first time we met in person. So that was oh, nice. that's so nice. Yeah. And, I'm, and I love to hear that she's like, every single day I sit down and I write my intentions, which, you know, is so powerful. And I heard again and again from your students, like how much that really helped them. So mm -hmm. if you guys, you know, don't know about that, Katie also has a, a freebie on your daily reflection template. Um, you can download that from her website. Um, so you guys should definitely check that out as well. Okay, the next person that we're gonna have come on is um, also one of your uh, former students and she's um, pulled you in to work with her organizations. We have um, Stephanie Oliver from STAT Canada. Hey. <laughs> Hi, happy second year anniversary of the L2L book. You helped me take root and grow. Thank you so much for putting your heart and your voice into this book. It has helped my leadership coaching skills as well as my own uh, leadership, leadership practices uh, take root in intention, grow, and 
develop them so that I can continue in turn to help others learn to lead so they can lead to learn. I've really enjoyed learning from the book, from all the stories from Mr. Yoshino and Katie's insights, as well as going through the masterclass. Um, as a lean coach, it's helped me deepen my skills so I can better help others. others. And I've been able to um, even have some of our executives in my organization take the masterclass too, which has been uh, a huge uh, help and a huge blessing and so meaningful for them. I've seen them grow as well through it. I've seen them uh, start asking better questions, go to the Gemba to better understand employees' experiences and what is truly going on. I especially love the coaching uh, continuum and questions like, are you telling or are you asking? And who owns this problem are reflections I often hear from them, uh, which makes me smile. I know that you will continue to help countless of people lead with intention so they can lead to learn. And I'm so, uh, so proud of you. I'm so thankful for you. And I'm truly forever grateful. Blessings. Oh, that's so nice. And yes, yeah, Stephanie, we actually met when she first signed up. She was going to be part of my um, Japan trip in May of 2020. And then through the pandemic, we've worked together. She, you know, learned you know she took my master class which is also available and she we had a way where she partnered with me to have access to the master class for lots of her leaders and she co-facilitated some discussion questions and so it was just another example of different ways um, i've been able to partner with um, lean and continuous improvement leaders in their organization to amplify these messages as well so that was so um, that was so wonderful thank you stephanie <laughs> Yeah, uh, and she's such a sweetheart and she's a very good student. And all of those terms that she was mentioning, if you guys are not familiar with them, then I strongly encourage you to pick up uh, Katie's book so you can learn about all those different things that she mentioned, because they're just, you know, as she mentioned, they're super helpful. <laughs> yes, leading with intention, slowing down, connecting with our purpose, aligning our actions, breaking the telling habit, <laughs> um, and how to ask better questions and not questions in disguise. They have been incredibly impactful in my life. And I just, so happy to be able to help other people have those aha moments and um, more equipped to spread that uh, in those important behaviors in, in the world. Yeah. Cool. Well, we're going to wrap up in a little bit. So again, I want to encourage anybody who's watching live to go ahead and pop any questions that you guys have in the comments. Um, and while we wait for that, um, Katie, the next question is a little like behind the scenes is, uh, so what's next? Oh, well, we already talked about a lot of things that's coming up next. This fall is a lot of travel for me, to almost like the book tour that didn't get to happen in 2022. I'm going to Poland, Portugal, Colombia, and the Netherlands, as well as um, the AME conference uh, here in the U.S. in Dallas uh, this fall. So it's a packed schedule, which I can't wait. And I'll bring as many to room as I can to these <laughs> events. I'm running low because I usually stock up on my trips to Japan, and it's been two and a half years now. Um, I'm really excited to have dates for my next Japan trip. I'm just waiting patiently for Japan to open their borders to tourism so that we can actually run that trip. But uh, that'll be the second week in May of 2023. So um, sign up to learn more about that when we do open the registration. Um, again, I'll be sharing this video with Mr. Yoshino. I know he's going to be looking to, uh, he'll, he'll enjoy watching it. So I hope you have enjoyed all these comments and feedback, Mr. Yoshino. I'm also working with several organizations. Sean's at Genentech is one of them. I had some other clients here, some big multinationals and large, larger complex organizations, um, some government agencies, um, some healthcare systems to bring these concepts and take, take stories from the book or use the book as a learning uh, platform. And then uh, combined with these teaching and coaching practices of my own to really help their organizations move from being more project-based or tool-based, but getting back to that heart and that caring and that curiosity and how to really have the leadership behaviors and the coaching behaviors that will really have that impact of creating a learning organization and more purpose and connection with intention. Um, and so it's 
been so fun to be able to continue to grow my chain of learning um, through not just the book, but the work that I do with clients and speaking engagements as well. So if you want to learn more about how we can partner together, uh, send me a message. I'd love to set up time to talk with you about how I can support you and your organization. And we will likely be doing another Leading to Learn Accelerator cohort in 2023, as well as my Japan study trip. So lots of ways that we can connect and share and grow together. Um, and I'm excited for the book to be coming out in Portuguese uh, later this year and talking about a few other languages as well. So um, lot, lots, um, lots going on, but that's what gives me joy about curating community and connections and learning. So um, thank you for all being part of the celebration and Claire and Brady, um, my invisible team member here too. Thank you for being part of my team and others uh, who help enable me so many, so many um, yeah, it's super exciting. So that, yeah. that's what's next for now. And uh, we'll see how the world evolves. You know, we've all learned that um, the best laid plans may not actually <laughs> come to fruition. And I think this is the, the nice compliment between what do we want to achieve and the concept that, you know, we may have goals and things that we want to do and accomplishment, but we may not be able to achieve them because of external factors or what's going on. Like I had... <laughs> I injured my knee very badly earlier this year and I've had two surgeries. And so a lot of my plans haven't been able to happen. But what we always have control over is who we are and how we show up. And this is about living and leading with intention. Who do you wanna be? What impact do you wanna have? And then what actions do you need to take to, to align with that? That's the heart, intention equals heart plus direction. And so we always have the choice of how we respond and how we show up. And so um, despite all the things we wanna achieve and whether or not they happen, how do you be the person you want to be, one that's leading with caring and curiosity and courage? And I am so grateful for everything I've learned from Mr. Yoshino, from the people who came before me in my chain of learning, and with all of you too, because um, I continue to grow, learn, and develop through each and every interaction that I have. So thank you all. Yeah, thank you to everybody who, who came today and was able to join us live. And if you watch the replay, let us know in the comments yeah. and you can still leave your questions there and, you know, we can get back to you later. And um, I just wanted to um, read one or two comments that have just come in uh, recently while we were chatting. One is from Mansoor saying storytelling format of the book was very helpful, understanding the difficult concepts of continuous mm. improvements. Congratulations and thank you for putting together simple and effective concepts. I have to completely agree with that because that is not my area of expertise. Uh, Katie did not hire me because of my, you know, uh, understanding of continuous improvement. But I mean, even I could pick up and read the book. And actually, funny story, Katie actually had sent the my copy of my book to my old address, which went to my parents' house. And they said, oh, what is this? And so both of them read it <laughs> as well. And they loved it. And they really enjoyed it. So um, again, it could, do, it could be for anybody. Yes. Well, thank you. And that, that was my intention, too. I had this, like, I knew there were many different audiences for this. And like Mr. Yoshino's stories, are not just for executive leaders or people who are passionate about continuous improvement or the Toyota way. I needed to, I wanted to be able to create a book that gave enough information. That's why there's little snippets about what is Hoshin Conry or A3. So it gives context to people who might not be familiar with that. But how do we get back to the principles and the heart of leadership and the, you know, the simpler concepts around problem solving and a leader's role, the clarity of the leading to learn framework of just setting direction providing support and developing yourself. And I think that this, this framework is what really strikes the heart of so many people that I work with is like, we can have all these tools and these concepts and, uh, and all these things that help enable us and they're important, but sometimes it gets too complex. And if we can get back to that simplicity of where do we need to go? How are we supporting our people to get there? And how are we developing ourselves to become better leaders, better humans at the same time? We're gonna be able to achieve so much. So, um, I encourage you to all to continue to go back and read the stories from Mr. Yoshino, reflect on the questions I've put out there. I'd love to work with you and through the Leading to Learn Accelerator program or you reflecting more about intention through the workbook yeah. or engaging me to come and help you be more effective in your organization to bring these principles to uh, your leaders and your teams um, through speaking or uh, custom custom programs. So I love connecting with people and I love creating this chain of learning because when we can learn and grow together, we achieve so much. 
Yeah. So yeah. thank you all. And thank you to my team for putting on this wonderful party and <laughs> not with me not organizing it and having some surprise guests as well. Thank you for everyone for showing up and putting in your questions and comments around the world. Again, I'll be sharing this with Mr. Yoshino. And I just want to say thank you for two years of learning to lead, leading to learn. If you haven't left a review yet, please do so. It really helps the book reach a broader audience who might not be aware, like Claire's parents. <laughs> they didn't know about the book, but they could have been scrolling on Amazon or wherever they buy or listen to books. Uh, and so your reviews matter because it does, it does help um, amplify the book's reach. So that is a gift that you could give to Mr. Yoshino and me. Um, and been just hearing from all of you about the impact the book's made has been um, so rewarding. So thank you so much. And um, please stay connected and we'll continue our chain of learning together. Yeah. So if you guys want to stay on, if you missed at the very beginning, our lovely team member Brady has put together an amazing video montage um, of the book. So go ahead and stay on for that if you missed it the first round. And again, thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for helping me celebrate two years of learning to lead and leading to learn and many more years to come and reflections as well. So thank you. Thank you all and have a great day. that conference, he gave me his, uh, his, um, his business card and said, when you move to Japan, look me up and um, come down to Nagoya and I'll take you to Toyota City and we'll spend the day together. And I really, really couldn't believe my luck. I was like, this is amazing. So um, I did, we did, I made my husband take the day off of work and we went down and that became the beginning of an amazing relationship. I would jump on the bullet train and go down, it took 90 minutes, and every about every two months, spend the day with Mr. Yoshino. Just developed this incredible relationship together, and I started writing blog posts. I had just started a blog that became an idea for, as he said, let's write a booklet together. Well, it, be, it became pretty clear to me that a booklet wasn't going to be enough. And so, as we started doing purposeful interviews, I also realized that my original intention of writing a book with leadership, but with a clear leadership, like, uh, topic uh, with stories underneath also wasn't going to suffice and wanted to figure out a way to write his learning journey from the beginning of a career all the way to, to the end and how we can all learn to lead and lead to learn and how we can create a life of purpose and meaning and also help others do the same and so that's how the book came to be. everyone. It's finally done. I have my Daruma here and I get to fill in his eye. I'm so excited. I literally just a few minutes ago sent the final approval message to my editor and as I am recording this she is uploading it to Amazon and it will be in your hands. We're sharing. Okay. Woohoo! Uh, an accomplishment! Yay! Yay! Thank you. Yay. Today is the one year anniversary or birthday of my book, Learning to Lead, Leading to Learn, Lessons from Toyota Leader Isao Yoshino on a Lifetime of Continuous Learning. And it's the release of my audio book, going to be uh, the new version of my book, Learning to Lead, Leading to Learn in Spanish. Also, thank you very much for, for Katie writing the book, you know, otherwise uh, I never, I never thought I could learn this much.